culture secretary, actually, to Nick Wood. <laughs> Nick, where are you? Cultural attaché, mate. I'm, I'm on a sort of farm, but also on a, a car production plant. I've already given the game away on this, that this is not a vintage car, it's actually a kit car. One stamp of our programme is we like to go back to stories when we've actually flagged something up. And uh, a few months ago we were talking about big changes in the kit car industry, that government regulations were coming in, which would make it quite a lot harder to actually own and build a kit car. So that's why we've come along to uh, a place near Crawley, close to Gatwick Airport, because they're just building this prototype, but this is more the sort of model that they're actually producing. It's called the Scamp, it's uh, solely produced here. You'll see the influence of a Mini and a Mini Moke, and uh, we're going to find out now about the origins of this vehicle. The Scamp is based on a BMC Mini and first went into production 30 years ago. The cars were originally designed and built in Ottershaw near Woking. Over 200 were produced every year. This rural complex in West Sussex is now the headquarters for the Scamp kit car business. Andrew McLean acquired the business in 1987. He'd already built two of the vehicles from kits. Since he took over, he's introduced several design modifications to the chassis and the suspension. But one of the most significant advances has been the development of a 4x4 off-road scamp. The kit car market is relatively small. Only around 4,000 kits are sold every year in the UK. Owners have to get an MOT and affordable insurance can be another problem. Recent changes in government policy called single vehicle approval has also introduced strict guidelines on safety. And joining me now, after resting from all that incredible work, is uh, Andrew himself. Good afternoon, Nick. Good afternoon. What have those regulations, what those changes in regulations meant to the, the relatively small kit car market in the UK? They've increased the safety of the machines and uh, they cover all aspects such as glass, lights, wheels and tyres, brakes, uh, ensuring that the seat belts are in the correct places and the correct mounting points, etc. As far as the industry is concerned, uh, there's quite a few manufacturers in this country, big ones like Caterham, very small ones like you, Scamp. Um, has it actually affected your sales at all? Yes, it has. It slowed things down a bit because a test costs £165 at the moment and there's only 16 HGV stations uh, licensed to do it. What sort of prices are we talking about from the very lowest to the highest roughly for a kit car? Uh, my kit starts at £1,500 plus the VAT. And what about for the more expensive ones? Uh, the new model will be about £2,000 plus the VAT. OK, well let's move over to one of your customers, Mark Groves, who also happens to be a working, avid working lunch viewer, which is very nice, but you also get misty-eyed not just over Adrian and Adam, but also <laughs> over this scamp here. Why have a kit car? Why a scamp? Well, this particular one is, is quite practical, really. It's fun to build, fun to drive. It's got a good, strong chassis, aluminium panel, so it's not going to rot away. Um, and it can be very practical, really, if you can finish it to your own personal standard. But this is just a van, so it's not really representative. How did you feel about the changes in government regulations? Is it more red tape, or is it doing a favour for the industry and for the enthusiasts? I think it's quite good when, from the safety aspect, but uh, they are making it very difficult uh, and for certain kits. Uh, and Andy's having to look at other ways to get round it, so it's quite complicated for him, from his point of view. As far as you're concerned, is there more potential in the kit car market in this country? Is it just a quirk of the UK or is it a, a, a universal international market? No, I think it, it, it should be international. I mean, as we were saying earlier, when you think that um, uh, Lotus was a, a kit car, TVR and Marcus 30 years ago, and now they're, they're full production models and very expensive. OK, well, keep watching the programme, won't you? Thank Back you. to you, Andrew. Just one quick last look at this. I'm very impressed with it. It's actually a prototype, isn't Thank it? It's you, not yes. actually running. Pretty, When's it going to be completed? How much will it cost? Uh, another few months and it should be on the road. Uh, and again, it's got to go through the test. So we've got a fine, fair bit of fettling to do on it yet. And basically, you buy the kit, you've got to do all the assembling. Yeah, the uh, people buy the kit and put it together themselves. OK, yeah. very interesting. Stick with us tomorrow. We'll be going back to a, our final motoring theme, whether you're being ripped off or not. By the way, Scamp have got a website. Just whack in Scamp into Yahoo or something and you'll find him here. Anyway, back to you. If you use uh, heating oil to... Oh, oh.